Mr. Schmidt. Mr. Schmidt. Guess who's What's back? What's going on? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my yeah. goodness. You have been such a trooper taking care of us. In these last few days. I know. I know. We've been sad. And Maggie's mm. still here with us. Just snoozing on the carpet. If it wasn't for you, I don't know what this life would have been. <sighs> it would have mm. been sad, sad, It would have been sad, sad, sad. And we're both happy today because we both finished our Google test. Woo! Yes, and we're done. Whether Woo! we whether we passed or not, we yeah, don't know. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's done. But at it's least like, it's over. Oh, guys, hey, I have a lot more <clears throat> respect for you with that uh, SBAC testing. I'm going to tell you that. Yeah. Woo, shoot. Yeah. Yeah, we it can, was hard. We it can was stressful. Com we can commiserate with you. I'm trying not to run over Maggie. We're good. Okay. We're good. So, we'll yeah, this. definitely. Okay. okay. Yeah. So where are we at, Mr. Schmidt? So, today we have one page of reading. May 22nd reading. And guys, today it looks like there's not that much to do. So we're going to just make one video. And it'll be reading and math together. So we have read for 20 minutes, and what do we always have to oh, tell Oh, we always want to read for at least 30, guys. Come on. Read a book you enjoy. Um, use this time and enjoy something. And by the way, I did not say, hey, I want to be in charge of the lesson today. Yeah. She made me. Yeah. Mr. Schmidt's been doing such a good job, and I'm still a little off. So I feel like it'd be best. Anyway, I did not choose it that, to be that way. Well, I appreciate it. Use a book of your own or an article from the end of this packet. Okay, same thing every day. The Great Migration and the Growth of Cities. We've been reading this most of this week, and this is the last page, page 19. I forgot to cover up the words, so I'm not going to go all the way down and look at the words. Yeah. I'll, when, when we get to the words, I'll just go by it quick. Yeah. Okay, finish reading the selection together. Okay. Just, and I did read it, you know, on the couch before we came mm -hmm. in here. Discuss mm -hmm. the different factors that convinced many African Americans to leave the South during this period. And we've been doing that all week too, right? So I don't think, yeah. we really don't need to talk about it too much. We know that there was, there were lynchings in the South. That's yeah, one thing. Yeah, there was a lot of racism and stuff going on in the South. And even, there was in the North too. Uh, there was. But there not was. as bad as what but was in the in South. But in the South, people were really disgruntled because people that they were utilizing as free labor now had... All of a sudden had rights. Yeah, yeah had <laughs> rights. And, yeah. and had uh, to get were, paid. were felt as equals, <laughs> yeah. at least in their um, minds. In the law. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They definitely should have been treated as equals, but uh, some of the uh, slave owners certainly didn't want to feel that way. So it did create a lot of hardship down there and made it very difficult <clears throat> for uh, black folks to... Um, to live down there. So, yeah, some of them did go to the north where things were not Actually, necessarily easy. Yeah, lots of them went to the north. Yeah. And there were but other... But they had other... They did have opportunities. And as we read this, we found out there were other factors too, which I hadn't never thought of before, but World War One took yeah. place. And that drew a lot of factory workers into the war men yeah. who worked in factories in the yeah. north. So that opened up a lot of jobs. And so they actually needed... The migration to happen to fill in vacancies in jobs. That's true. Very true. So I thought that was cool. Yeah. That was a, something I learned this week. Yes. It seems like everything happens for a reason. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> so, okay. yeah. And, and I'm going to say this and it's kind of, but that's a beautiful picture. Yeah, I like this picture. I just love that picture. Yeah. Um, I just love the communication among people in the congregation. It looks Something like they're that happy. We don't have these right people. Now. Yeah, the people in the yeah the people here in the middle. Let me see. Um, I, I'll use the mouse because then I can highlight it later when we do the video. These people look really happy. This lady looks interested. This little kid, are they is, are they eating something? Yeah, you might be eating something. <laughs> but you know what? Something else I want to point out, Mr. What? Schmidt, what? is something that we have taken for granted. Um, if you look at all these people, they're formal dressed. I was going to say how they're dressed, huh? They are formal dressed yeah. because people of old, um, they did not go out unless they were dressed. Yeah. Um, because they presented themselves to the public and they always wanted to show themselves at their best. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, yeah, you didn't see them going this out. This guy in their, has a top hat. Yeah, they didn't go out <laughs> looking top all... Hat you know, work clothes, yeah. I've been working in the yard kind of stuff, yep. to be greeting people. Sunday best. Yeah, always yeah. Sunday best. That's what they called it. 
And the caption for this picture says, whole families of African Americans moved together to northern cities. So yeah. it wasn't just one or two of them, like, let's go, the whole family's moving. <laughs> yeah, and that would be the case that it might be several families at a time because let's all move at the it's same time. easier for us all to do this together. Where, Safety in numbers. Yes, absolutely, where yeah. if just my little family of four people, I might feel very frightened, but if there's like 12 families going yeah. together, we feel like as a larger group, we, we can um, survive this. Yeah. We can depend on each other because and we yesterday, can make it work. I think yesterday or the day before we were reading about there were people trying to obstruct them from even being able to oh, leave. Oh, sure. So if you were going with other families, that'd be a lot, it'd be it'd harder be to stop It'd be a lot easier you. for yeah. them to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to skip past the, mm -hmm. well, I don't know if I read the question. Ask how do the statistics and graphs in the text prove that many did leave? Now this page doesn't have that. So there are no statistics on this page. Um, but we know the previous page and the previous couple pages, we talked about the graphs yesterday. So I think that's kind of just rehashing what we did yeah. yesterday. So you guys can talk about that. It doesn't say we have to write anything about it. Mm -hmm. Usually they don't on these reading passages. What does it say down here? The black culture reports that in 1910, fewer than 600 of the 100,000 automo automotive workers were black. So that definitely um, says that there then were... Then by 1929, there were 25,000. Yeah, so definitely that. you can wow. see an increase in just that. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Hey, what's she doing? What's our dog doing? I <laughs> got doing... her. Okay. I'm May... in charge of the dog today. <laughs> May 22nd writing. She's not supposed to lick her stitches. And so a lot yeah. of times when we take her hood off, she starts doing that. Yeah, she has a couple of more days. May 22nd writing. Writing prompt. Write a story about something that makes you... Very excited. Woo! I'm so excited about being done with that test. Yeah. Just like, I am so done. I'm so happy. And I'll, be, I'll be extra excited if I pass. Oh, but definitely. But I, I, feel, I feel like I did. I definitely. feel like I did. If, if I didn't, I'll be really surprised. So. Yeah. Uh, but you yeah. know what? I feel like the kids, when we're done with the S back, you know what? I did my best. Yeah. And it's over with. And I'm, I'm proud of what I did. Yeah. So I'm good. So that's what you'd write about? A yeah, story definitely. About? Definitely. How would, what details would you add to it to make it a story? Uh, I would think about, I would talk about probably um, all of the studying that I did uh -huh. and then the reviewing back the videos at it that you and watched. watching the videos and then watching the videos talking again. Talking to your friends. And talking to my friends and rereading yeah. and then quizzing and, you know, just really wanting to be very prepared. And I had lots and lots of notes but then when it came down to actually doing it, I didn't even have time to refer to those notes. Yeah. I had to really, it's like I tell you guys with uh, something being open book. Yeah, the test can be open book, but you need to know your stuff because you don't have time to go and look up the answers in the book. It just does it's not like that. <laughs> so. Good. That's good. Yeah. Okay, let's go down. I'm not laughing at you. I'm just saying this is the girl who said, oh, no, I don't feel like making a video today. And here, look at her. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Inflectional endings. And yesterday I went through a lot of definitions about this because when I see inflectional, I think it's the tone of your voice and the pitch of your yeah, voice. Yeah, definitely. But in this case, it's just the endings that they use. So yeah. it changes the meaning of the word by, add yeah. by adding a particular suffix. And inflectional endings are a subgroup. Um, yeah, it, it changes the, the tense of it. It changes the tense of it, and also it can change the number of it. Yeah. Okay, so it says write the spelling words for the given inflectional ending. Let's go over the spelling words. You want to read them? Required, referred, uh, ratified, popping, assembling. She's doing something. Creating. Creating. creating exploited. Exploded. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> exploded. Inflating. Okay. You're a bit far back from, can, can you see okay? Yeah, okay. yeah, she's fine. Right, no, I meant the words. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Write yeah. the spelling words for the given inflectional ending. Okay, so we have these eight words, and you have eight blanks, and guys, come on, it ends with ED, it ends with ING, yeah. I know you you probably are already finished with this. ING, okay. yeah, the doctor blank. Oh, yeah, well, let's read the directions. Oh, of course. Go ahead, read the directions. Write a spelling word to complete each sentence. Okay, so here we go. The doctor blank me 
to an ear specialist. And we talk, I talked about this yesterday, giving so an example about this word. I would think that um, the doctor sent me to an ear which specialist. Which means, what which would word? Be, um, I would think referred. Referred, yeah. Yeah. And that's what we chose Suggested. yesterday. So we can write that one in. Yeah. Uh, let me, oh, it's already got a pen chosen. Cool. Re. I'm nervous writing in front of you. Awesome. Okay. And then I'll read number 10. You can, well, I'll do the even ones. Okay. The crew spent hours blank the balloons before the parade. No, what do you have to do to balloons before a parade? Okay. You have to put air in them. Yeah. And that's called them up inflating. Inflating. Yeah. yeah. So I'll write that in. You should write your words. I'm thinking turns. that these guys can do this. Oh, I was having fun. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Well, what about this one though? We the, talked about this one. This is the, the trickiest Senate word. The Senate blank the bill. Okay. What the, would you choose? Um, that was the well, one. Well, yeah. I'm going to say. It's, it's just not a commonly used yeah, word. Yeah. It's ratified. Yeah. Which means that approve they it. agreed Officially approve upon on it. it. Yeah, approve it. Yeah. Okay. Ratified. And you put it into law. Yes. means they all agreed that um, they would stand behind it. Okay. So you said they can do the last one? The yeah. university blank two forms of identification to enroll. They're yeah. making you have it? Yeah. They were... Oh, uh, yeah, said the word. you almost they, said it. They are... It starts with are, a re and ends in an ed. Yeah, yeah. And anyway, that's an easy yeah. one. They're, easy cheesy. They are... I, I don't want to say the word. This is There's a game where you have to not say the word. I forgot what it... Like taboo the or something? The university is demanding. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go. You ready? Okay, I'm ready. I think that means we're going to be on math now. I can't find my mouse. I always have this trouble. Where is your mouse, there Mr. It is. Okay, Schmidt? There it is. Well, because I can't scroll it unless I know where the mouse is. Yeah. Okay, so here's math. Okay. You want to read it? Okay. Understanding math expressions matching worksheet. Uh, match the expression to their correct equation. Write the letter of the answer that matches the expression. Okay, so number one says four times an unknown number decreased by four equals. So I like to take... Equals ten. Oh, I'm sorry, equals ten. Yeah. So I like to, um, you know, I kind of like... No, I was... Well, I, I guess I was telling them in my head. As I was reading these, I said, come on, guys. This is so simple. Okay, so... So I like to write over the top of it. Yeah, but what I was going to say is... They give you a big, huge clue. There's only five choices, right? Yeah. And which one said, I mean, the obvious part is here. Yeah. So that it's like giving away. But yeah. here, here they're not giving it away, but here they give it away. Equals 10. Uh, yeah. Which one equals 10? Only, only one of them. <laughs> so, but go ahead and tell them how you solve that. Well, for me, what I would be doing for this, Mr. Schmidt, is I like to, and my kids all know that what I like to do... Right is I like to just write over the number, so I'm going to get that pen. And so I say four times. Mm -hmm, I do that too. An unknown, so that means in to me. Um, decreased, so subtracted uh, by four, minus subtracted by four, uh, equals ten. So I'm going to look for something that looks similar to that. So, four times an unknown minus four equals ten. Okay. So, uh, what they have here is, in this case here, they have this number here. See, I have the times, but they're using the x as an unknown, which that is kind of not a good idea at our grade level. I would really prefer to see that as four times in minus 4 equals 10. And we use in because that is the most common um, letter that we use when we're talking about variables, the unknown. So um, that is definitely the one that you would choose here. Okay? And then number 2 for Mr. Schmidt, he says the quotient of so what we're talking about is the division 
of 12 times an unknown, 12 times, I'm going to say in again, most common letter used for a variable, um, unknown number, and 6 equals, okay, so the quotient of 12 times an unknown number, and 6 of, okay, so 12 times an unknown, unknown number, okay, the division of an, okay, what, which one is that going to be? Okay, so 12 times um, the unknown divided by 6, okay, uh, number, and 6 equals 72, okay, so that's 12 times the the unknown divided by 6 equals. Okay, so which one is that one going to be, Mr. Schmidt? You see? Holy macaroni right and cheese, there. I have it! It's right there! D. Okay, there you go. Whew. All right. I was getting lost in that one. Let me see. Okay. Okay. So this one, number 3 says the difference of 12 difference meaning I have to subtract 12 and the product of 9 and 7 okay so I know that in order of operations I would have to multiply first so I mm -hmm. could say 9 times 7 and then I need to have the difference so let me get rid of this one so I have 12 minus 9 times 7 because I would have to figure out or calculate 9 times 7 first what is that guys 63 Mm -hmm. uh. <clears throat> okay, so it says the difference of... Yeah, well, I'm looking at A because mm -hmm. I see A up here. And I'm yeah. thinking, are they... I mean, they're, they're not, they're not showing... They're yeah, numbers. Well, they're not saying to solve it either. They don't, they don't even have the equation. So their instructions, yeah. once again, the instructions are wrong because it says match the expression to their correct... Equation, equation, but guess which would what? Be solved. A is not even an equation because, guys, what does an equation require? An it requires sign. an equal sign. If it doesn't have an equal sign, then it's just an expression. Yeah. So, once again, a mistake. Okay. Yeah, but I that is the off. correct one. I gotta breathe. A is the correct answer for yeah. three. Yeah. Because yeah. I was thinking, wait, I didn't see any negative answers. But yeah, you would, this would be a negative number because you're subtracting quite a bit from 12. Yeah, that's okay. a big So yeah, the answer would be A. Okay, you're next. Okay. Okay, the question, uh, the, okay, so the division, okay, so I'm going to put this here, the division of 8 times an unknown and 2 Okay, so the division of this and 2. Okay, so I'm looking at, so what I'm looking at is 8 uh, times the unknown divided by 2 equals 12. Yeah. Okay. And we see where that is. Okay, so it's E. Uh -huh. Awesome. Now we only okay. have one left, right, guys? Okay. So the good thing is try and work it out and then see which one matches it. Now, this is definitely something that we do in uh, fifth grade. So five says two times. So two times an unknown. We're going to use N number decreased by three equals 5. Okay, so if this is being decreased by 3, then it's going to equal 5. So 2 times what? So I'm going to say, if I, if I was going to solve that, 2 times 4 would be 8 minus 3 would equal 5, right? Okay, let's go so up let's and see. So let's see, do I have one of those? 2x there it is. minus 3 equals 5. And as I told you guys before, see, I'm doing two times in, but um, in, I, as I said earlier, this is uh, really not a good idea. Somebody pulled a worksheet from somewhere and hadn't really thought it out. 
Um, well, I want to I want to say something though. I want to I want to add my thoughts to it too. Okay. Go ahead, finish your thought. Um, was that we have not really uh, finalized this here. When we are in um, sixth grade, this can easily look like a two n minus three equals five. And what that when we have a number and um, an unknown um, a variable next to each other, that does mean to multiply. If we don't have a sign, that does mean to multiply. So that does mean two times an unknown minus three equals five. But you have not been really taught that yet. So it's really kind of unfair that um, that is being, and especially when they are using x as their variable. That really is confusing because that looks like times to you. And well, so, I just want to add, okay, when you guys talk about coordinate plane systems, you're going to see lots of equations mm -hmm. with x in them. Yeah. Yeah. So there, here's a here's a little equation. Y equals m x, which means m times x, plus or minus b. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this this these are the coordinates x and y on a coordinate plane. Let me just do a quick drawing. Okay. The y axis, the, the x. x axis, arrowheads everywhere. The mm -hmm. origins in the center. So they do use x. A lot as a variable in algebra. Oh, absolutely. So, uh, well, you said they use n more than anything, but I'm I'm talking about when you guys get to algebraic equations, they use x a lot. Yes, when we're talking about yeah. planes. And, and so, when when you when you get into upper grades, you're going to see things like this. In yes. Instead of writing a time sign the yes, way you're it used is a to it, dot. they'll use a dot like this, or they'll just put them next to each other. But of course, two and three, you could not put those next to each other because what is that? They look like twenty three. Twenty three. So you'll see it like that. Yes. And they will not use an X type symbol for times anymore. Yeah. So I just wanted to point that out. Yes, definitely. We started <clears throat> uh, talking about this at the end of what our school year was. Yeah, um, and and when if we had gone into geometry more, we would have. Oh, gone we would more have definitely. Uh, we would have gone through this. That's the part and we, we missed. We would have definitely started using the X, um, Mr. That's Schmidt. That's called is, slope intercept form. Yes, absolutely. And we would have definitely done that. I just don't feel like at this point that that was really fair. Right. So when they are talking about this, this is not to mean multiply. That is the variable. Yeah. And so. And that's why it's right next to it. Yeah. So please, um, please pay attention to what we are doing here, um, because we're going to need to do a lot more work on this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ready for the other two problems? We just have two, well, okay, three problems. Okay. <laughs> okay, you ready? I'll read and you do them. <clears throat> no, no, that's yeah, not fair. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I'll do the first one, and you do the second one. Okay. What? I'm good. Oh, you, uh, actually, you do the first one, I'll do the second oh. one, you do the third one. No, no. Because you said you weren't doing anything. Nope, no, no, no. Then she no, took over, You're right? on it. You're on it, buddy. <laughs> okay. Order of operations, word problem, guided lesson. I guess it's guided because we're showing it to you on the video. Mm-hmm. Number one. Jacob wanted to purchase a boat. The dealership offered the following payment terms for Jacob. A $800 down payment, and I would not say it that way. I would say an $800 because mm -hmm. it starts with a vowel sound. An $800 yeah. down payment, $800 down payment, and $275 a month for 36 months. Mm -hmm. If Jacob makes all the payments on time, he will be refunded $400. What will be the total cost of the boat if Jacob makes all of his payments on time? So I would just write this down step by step. I know that he has to pay $800 at the beginning. That's the down payment. Mm -hmm. Then we have to add on. What do we have to add on? $275 a month for 36 months. Mm -hmm. And so we have to multiply that, right? Every month he has to pay $275 and he has to do that Time. for 36 months. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I could put parentheses around that, but since I know that multiplication comes before addition, mm -hmm. I know I need to do this part first. And that's why yeah. I'm not putting the parentheses. Although sometimes I would just organize it. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't change anything if I did because I still would have to do the multiplication first. Okay, so anyway, next step. If Jacob makes all the payments on time, he will be refunded $400. So what does that mean? We're he gets $400 add. back. Yeah, no. so we're going to add so another. So I'm going to subtract, right? Well, if we want to know uh, the total payment, the total amount he's paying, correct? Mr. Schmidt, if he makes all the payments on time, guess mm -hmm. what? He gets $400 back. And so that's what will be the total cost of the boat. It's not asking how much payments did he make. Okay. It's saying what's the total cost of the boat. We have to subtract the refund. Okay. Otherwise, Very the, true. Yeah. Very true. She's been sick, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I was thinking that's the total cost of the boat, but they were going to refund you $400 for making all your payments on time. They will, and that's why the total cost of the boat will be It will actually be less $400. because you're not actually going to pay that $400. <clears throat> Very so, true. guys... Should we, how about this? You pause it, solve it, and we'll see if we agree. Okay, you ready? Okay, pause it. Unpause. Okay, <laughs> okay you ready? Okay, so let me see. We know we have to do the multiplication first, right? Let's, let's mm -hmm. just write it down for notes. Parentheses or these buttons. They're not supposed to do that. Exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. Okay, so we know we would, there are no parentheses, there are no exponents, we have to multiply now. Is she doing that again? I'm watching her. Okay, so guys, I just, you know what, I want to do something and it's probably going to drive Mrs. Schmidt crazy. But she said she wouldn't criticize me, so let's this see. This is Mr. Schmidt, our. Let's see, let's see if she criticizes me, she probably won't be able to help herself. Okay, so I just want to change... I just don't want to do it the normal way today. I want to do this. 275 times 36. I just like doing my fun way. To me, this is more fun. Okay. We could check it the tra I, In fact, you can check it the mm -hmm. traditional I'm way. I'm good with you. You go ahead and do it. Corner to corner, corner to corner. That one's a little bit off corner to corner okay so let's see what we've got and that, since I have all that color I'm gonna switch colors again okay so five times three 15 ooh that's a fat pin Yeesh. okay I'm just gonna change the color of the skinny pin okay let me see there okay and five times six 30 and then seven times three 21 seven times six 42. 2 times 3, 0, 6. 2 times 6, 12. Okay? Now I have to add them up. 0, and then 5 plus 3 plus 2, that's 8 plus 2, that's 10. I have to regroup and put an extra 1 up there. I have 3 there, plus 4, that's 7, 8, 9, so that's a 9. And then I have 8, 9 again. There's nothing up there, so... This adds up to $9,900. Now, I'm feeling like Mrs. Schmidt's going to say, I don't know about that. So let's do it <coughs> her way. <coughs> so we have times 36. $275 times 36. 6 times 5, 30. Regroup. 6 times 7, 42 plus 3, that's 45. Okay, 6 times 2 is 12, plus 4 is 16. Now, see, this is the part I like about the other way. I never have to do this. I never have to get rid of those for my next step. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to put a placeholder on, on this method. Mm -hmm. Okay, but here you have to always remember to put your placeholder. Okay, so now, what's 3 times 5? Uh, that's 15. 1 goes here. What's 3 times 7? 21 plus 1, 22, 2 and two. Three times two is six, seven, eight. Eight. It's looking good. Add these together. Zero. Ten. Regroup. That's a nine. And that's a nine. And guess what? We match. Mm -hmm. The answers match. So you have <coughs> a 990. So, so I know that this portion is $990. Then I have to add 800 to it, right? 
$990 plus $800. Okay, so I have 0, 0, 17, 1, that's 10, $10,700. But then what do I do? Well, if I paid it all on time, which, or if Jacob paid it all on time, what does he get? A $400, $400 refund. Back. So now we're going to subtract the $400. And what is the total cost of his boat? $10,300. Ooh. $10,300 for paying it on time. Cool. Cool. Sorry I used up your space. I'm going to just erase this part. And this part. There. So now your problem isn't... Oh. I should probably, maybe I should scoop this up or something. Ah! Never mind. <laughs> okay, you can, you can do this part. Okay, so let's see. Now, I haven't had a look at this yet, so let me see. Okay, um, Michelle takes her two children. So let's take a peek at this. Uh, takes her two children and two neighbor's children to the water park for the day. So we have four kiddos. So I'm going to say four... Uh, children. Okay. I know it's looking <laughs> okay. kind of got crazy over there. All right. The cost She's been of sick. the cost of a ticket is twenty eight dollars for adults and nineteen dollars for kids under the age of fourteen. Okay, all children are under thirteen, so that's good. Uh, okay, so $19. So I know already it's $19. Oops. $19 times 4. So I'm going to say that's 36. 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so I have $76 uh, for the kids. Okay, uh, for. Okay. For groups of four or more, there is a 10% discount. How much did it cost, Michelle, for the trip? Okay, for her, let me go back and take care of that. So, um, Michelle, I'm assuming she's an adult, so that's an extra $28. Yeah, because it's saying she takes her two children. Yeah, two she children. She better be an adult. <laughs> two children plus two others. Okay, um, so 10%. Okay, for groups of four... Or more. So there are five people. So I need to add this together. 76 uh, plus. Hey, 20. wait a minute, wait a yes. minute, wait a minute. If you guys want to figure it out, pause. Okay, freeze. Unpause. Ah! <laughs> plus 28. Okay, so that's 14. Um, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's $104. But then we have a 10% discount. So. 10%, that is, if you remember what I said about percentage, uh, those two dots right there, they tell me how many times to jump my decimal. So it was one, two. So it's going to go right there. Little tricks of my trade. Okay? So, and we have to multiply that. So that's zero, zero, zero base holder and that's four that's zero and that's one so I have zero I have four I have zero and I have one and it's two places so I have a discount of ten dollars and forty cents okay so I have one hundred four dollars and so I'm gonna need to write it like that and I need to subtract ten dollars and forty cents. Okay, so that means I've got to regroup. That's three. This is going to be nine, and this is going to be ten. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Why are you putting a ten above the zero? Ah, you're, you're right. You're <laughs> okay. right. You're right. Don't need to. Ah, I'm getting confused. Okay, you're right. Don't need to. It's just, yeah. She's been okay. sick. She's yeah, been sick, Yeah, thank people. you. I really have. Okay, so 10 minus 4 can, here, is 6. Why don't we just go like, okay. let's erase some of the ink so it'll be easier for them to okay. see. Okay. Okay, so 
Um, let me go back to my regrouping. Yeah, just that was three. I would subtract this column and first before so you even regroup. that's a 10. Well, that's just going to be zero. Group. I know, but so when you subtract, you start. Six, and then uh, three minus zero is still going to be three. Ten minus one is nine. Just for uh, money-wise, I just want to... So we have $93.60 was her cost. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Schmidt. Okay. So that should be her cost of going in. And again, um, kind of feel like they introduce you to percentages. And we really didn't spend... That's more of a yeah. not fifth grade thing. Yeah. So, anyway. But you guys can handle it. 10%? Yeah. It's not hard. Yeah, that was easy. Okay, yeah. number three. Okay. Gabe is a new car sales manager. Mm -hmm. He started on the first day of February. Now, this might be a crazy problem because they even say something is crazy about it. So let's let's see. Gabe is a new car sales manager. He started on the first day of February. Okay, I got that. The previous sale. Oh, I, I want to highlight this as I go. The previous sales manager kept strange notes. Ah, strange ah, notes. Ah, there we go. To count how many cars he had on his lot. Gabe needs to determine the number of cars on the lot. Okay. The starting count of cars in January was 124. Okay. Now, I'm just going to write a note about that. There were 124 cars in January. Mm -hmm. Okay. 42 less than four times that amount of cars were delivered to the dealership in January. Okay. So, in January... They get more cars, right? So I'm going to add. And then what am I going to add? 42 less than 4 times that amount. Okay, so we have 4 times this amount, right? 4 mm -hmm. times 124. And then I have to subtract. I'm just, I'm putting parentheses around it, guys. Because I know this is all one quantity that I'm dealing with. And I have to subtract. And I know multiplication happens first. Then I would subtract 42, 42, because it says 42 less. 42 less than four times this amount. Okay. That was delivered in January, so this is still all January. 13 cars were returned by customers, and five of those cars were donated to charity. Okay, so let's do those two steps. 13 cars were returned by customers, so they had 13 more cars, and then... Five, five of those were cars donated. were donated, so, so they five. lost five for donations. So then at the beginning of February, how many cars would be on the lot? Ready? Okay. Pause. Mm -hmm. Unpause. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so obviously I would do this part first. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I put parentheses around it because this is, a, this is the meat of the problem right here. That's the juiciest part. Okay, so 4 times 124, I would do that first, so 124, okay, and I just did it in my head because I said, hey, 400s, 420s, and 44s, okay, but anyway, let's write it down, 4, let's do it the way that Mrs. Schmidt likes, 4 times 4 equals, for some reason I'm writing it slanted, okay, 4 times 4 equals 16, regroup a 1, 4 times 2 equals 8, plus that 10 up there, that's 9, so that's 90. And then 4 times 100 equals 400, mm -hmm. so it's 496. That's what I had in my head. Okay, so this part is 496. Mm -hmm. Now I have to add these three values and then subtract 5. So I'm going to save that piece for last right there and just write what I have to add. 124 plus 496 plus 13. 124, 496 plus 13. Add those. So now I have 10 plus 3. 6 plus 4 is 10, right? I just automatically group things into 10. 10 plus 3 equals 13. Now I see I have a 9 and a 1. That's a 10 there. And then I have 3 up here. So that's 13 again. Then I have 4 plus 1 plus 1. That's 6. But I'm not finished because I have this right here to do too. So I have 633 total cars on the lot. But then we donate 5. Or they donate 5. Okay, I need to regroup. This will be a 2. This will change to 13. 
13 minus 5 is 8. 2, nothing to subtract. 6, nothing to subtract. That's how many cars I had left. Oh, I forgot to subtract the 42. Why did you let me go that far? And <laughs> okay, Mrs. Schmidt was being evil to me. She, did, she let me go right ahead without doing that part. Okay, so I have to do 496 minus 42. But you know what, guys? If I'm subtracting this 42 here, I can just subtract it now. 628. If I see that I forgot to subtract 42 and I'm not multiplying it or dividing it or anything, then all I do, all I need to do is subtract 42. it now. Add another 42. Yeah, subtract another 42. I'm yeah. sorry. Okay. I meant add another 42 to your subtraction. <sighs> no, I'm just saying you just let me go on. <laughs> Just enjoyed just, messing with me. Well, I just wanted you might have had a... 12 point. minus 4 equals 8. I was having such fun. Mm -hmm. And then I have 5, so 586. Woo! So yeah, 586 586 cars. 86 cars on the lot. Awesome. Circle, Circle my answer, answer because that's too much stuff there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Woo. And that... That is a hot mess. ...concludes our lesson. Yeah. Congratulations. Whew, that was a that was a mess, Mr. Schmidt. It wasn't that bad of a mess. Yeah. I mean, I knew that's a crazy problem because they yeah. said strange Ugh. notes and yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, what do you have in your parting words? Well, guys, uh, I'm glad to be back. We're at the end of our time. Yeah, this Friday. Yeah, pizza day. Yeah, it is pizza day. Although Woo we're having pizza day. We're having chicken and rice with yeah, vegetables. Yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. Ms. Schmidt's on a little bit more yeah. bland of we're, a diet. We're today. not. We're not having pizza today, but that's no, okay. no, we had it on Monday though. So. And Kevin had leftover pizza for lunch. So. Yeah, so yeah. we're good. But I hope you guys enjoy your weekend and um, yeah. Oh, and if you are um, a Chavez student, please make for sure you go to I Chavez too. on Tuesday. I believe it's somewhere around 9 o'clock, maybe 8 to 10, somewhere. At Eisler, so it's 8 definitely, to 1. Uh, definitely show up about 9 o'clock. Please pick up your belongings. The stuff you had in your desk. Yes. Because, it's all bagged up with yes, your name on it. Yes, because some of you guys left some books, so please make for sure that you pick yeah. up your stuff. I bagged up everybody's stuff, and I can tell you... Um, everybody has something except Daniel G. He yeah. evidently took everything out of his desk. And I already, so. guys sent, I already sent you guys a message on Dojo about it with yeah. the list. Almost everybody mm -hmm. had stuff. So. And also make for sure you turn in your packets in any work uh, that you want me to include on your report card. Okay. All right. You guys have a great weekend. You Love to, ya. You had to finish the video with report card. I know. <laughs> okay. Have a good weekend, you guys. Bye, guys. Bye.